Hey folks, welcome to the stream. I'm Commander Red Falcon, and we are currently on the upper part of the galactic plane. If you were, uh, remember last time, our view kind of looked like this. Well, now we've got <laughs> a view that looks like this. And just to show you what I mean, let's take a look at the galactic map here. Okay, so that's actually one of my waypoints, um, but you'll see where we are right here. Oops. Oh, this thing's frustrating. All right. Let's try this again. Okay. And what... Seriously, what the hell? I must have clicked on something weird. There we go. Sometimes this uh, map doesn't like to update. There we go. Alright. So if you look... Zoom out a little bit here. So this is more or less the mass of the stars are along this plane, and we're right up here. Uh, I believe we're about, let's see, how far are we from Colonia? We are 5,537 light years from Colonia. So, um... So pretty much when I was off stream, um, I just went and um, just traveled um, back through the uh, galactic plane, back up to where we are here. So that point is 844 light years, and unfortunately, my ship can't get to it, and I'll show you why. Um, a big part of it is there are just simply no neutron stars uh, that far out. Well, on this path. Come on. Okay, there it is. Let's see here. If I can... There we go. I'm going to try to plot a route. Plot failed. Um, even if I'm doing uh, FSD boost, I'm doing FSD boost to level 3. It gets about... Yeah, out of range. So... We can't go there, unfortunately. However, uh, we can make it to the second um, highest point. Uh, well, that should be within our range, and we're going to get there today. So first things first, let me go grab those next waypoints, and I'll be right back. Okay, let's see here. So we're going to have to get a little creative with our navigation. This one's quite a bit away. But hopefully, we can get there. Awesome. Okay, cool. We can actually... Make it to that neutron star. Perfect. All right. So, first things first. Are there any neutron stars in here? Bearings here. 
I'm not even sure. Yep, there's a neutron star here. Good. Um. Okay, what are you? Are you a fuel star? Please be a fuel star. Yes. All right. Let's get some gas off this star first, since we're running a little low. So, yeah, top of the galactic plane looks very similar to the bottom of the galactic plane. Uh, you'll see the mass of gases and stars over here on our uh, port side, and then the uh, abyss, <laughs> the, the nothingness out beyond there. And you can see there's a few stars out here, but not many. So what was really cool about uh, my trip back was I was able to plot several or discover several new neutron stars. So I'm actually making a contribution to the um, neutron highway since obviously um, you have to know about neutron stars before you can plot a route through them. So that's pretty exciting. As much as I've used the Neutron Highway, it's good to be able to give back a little bit. Okay, I feel like I'm getting too close. Ah, damn it. <sighs> okay, what the hell? Where'd my orbital lines go? Wasn't paying attention. Orbital lines are still on. Uh, gotta wait for the FSD to cool down. Uh, well, hopefully that's not a preview of how this run's gonna go. Uh, what's the damage? Okay, at least the heat's holding steady. Yeah, everything took one to two points of damage. Uh... So I can fix all this except for the hull and the um, power plant. Oh damn! And I took a, um, I took some star damage earlier. Oh, great. Oh well. All right. Let's line up with the escape vector. All right, let's try this refueling maneuver again. All right. All right, let's cool off a little bit and I'll come around for another pass. Sad part was I was almost done. Try this again. So either the lines just disappeared or I was too close. Well, obviously I was too close, but I'm thinking maybe there's a sweet spot where if you get too close to an object, the lines just disappear. There we go. Yeah, we just gotta stay, keep our nose above that line. All right. Let me make sure we're good. What's my... Okay, yeah, yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't done a neutron boost yet. Oh, what's the health of my FSD looking like? Uh, where are you? 
Frame shift drive, 98%. Yeah, you'll be all right. Old girl's taking a tumble, but... I think we'll be okay. All right, I'm not seeing the cones yet. Where are the cones? I mean, it sure as hell looks like it on the scanner. Ah, there we go. Yeah, we were too far away to see the cones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow down, slow down. I get it. All right. Okay, this is going to be an interesting maneuver. That's all I wanted. I just wanted the supercharge. Okay. Alright. Further into the void we go. First jump of the stream. So I've got nine jumps until we get to that next point. Alright. I'm going to go check the stream real quick. No comments about my flying skills. That's good. System scan complete. All right. My question is, has anyone found this place before? Huh. Okay. Another point. Now I'm curious. So what I've been doing before... Was basically going through and... Visiting a nearby system. Ah, here we go. Like this one. Ah, Damn it, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to plot a route. Ah. Actually, yeah, that's fine. Let's just do that. Happy accidents, right? Yeah, it is very eerie being um, above the galactic plane like this. Though it feels like I'm... There we go. <laughs> Better perspective. <laughs> Since there's no true, like, up or down in space. Seven planets, huh? All right. All right. See if there's anything worth looking at here. 
Mm. Rocky ice, rocky ice. Some gas giants. Now the question is, has anyone found this place yet? Because if no one's found this system, I might as well just scan everything, get a nice big paycheck. Oh yeah, I don't think anyone's been here before. Yep. Alright. Let's start scanning. Start with gas giants. They might be a good. Ah, here we go. Tune that in a little bit. Yeah, what's nice about being this far out above the galactic plane is there are a lot of systems that uh, no one's found yet, so. Big paycheck for me. Well, we got something here. A bunch of ice bodies. Nothing too interesting here. It's also a lot of neutron stars out this way, too. Which is very helpful. <laughs> yeah, I doubt. I mean, there's a small chance these rocky bodies might be candidates for terraforming, but I doubt it. Those are pretty rare. And especially with it being close to all those um, icy planets. Oh, gas giant with ammonia-based life. Gas giants out this way. All right, and I believe there's probably one more gas giant in the system, and this is probably it. Yep. And all of its moons. System scan. All right, system scan complete. Let's see if there's anything worth scanning here. These all look like rocky bodies. Nope. Nope. 
Yeah, you can tell these are new. So I have my doubts about making Elite when I reach um, Sagittarius A, but at the rate that I'm accumulating um, new systems, I, I'm i pretty sure I'm going to have well over um, the required. I think I need only like 150 million credits now. So I should be able to hit that without an issue. Um, let's see what we got here. All right, let's replot this because I didn't mean to do that. Okay, cool. Um, if you're ever playing and you're having trouble plotting these long routes, uh, make sure that you've got in your um, computer, you have fastest route, max 20k light years, and then make sure you've got use jet cone boost. Um, that'll force your computer to only plot through, well, okay, I, I say only. Um, it'll encourage your computer to plot to stars that are um, uh, neutron stars. So you can make those long ranges. So, pro exploration tip. Um, also, if you look at my auto field maintenance unit, well, it's gone now, but I've had to do some uh, field repairs on my ship. So, I'm going to have to do some more. <laughs> Maybe I'll land on a planet in that system we're going to. Um, the next waypoint. Whoa, hello. That's some nice big cones there. Oh, okay. Yeah, just three stars. Come on, get in there. Nice and easy. There we go. Well, the good news is I've got plenty of minerals to make a new to make new ammunition for my um, AFMU, so I can make repairs after I've um, all my am ammunition is used up. I hate calling it ammunition. But technically, yeah, it's ammunition. I think of it as parts. Or I, I like to think things like a 3D printer, and you need like raw materials to build stuff. All right, it's high metal content world. Awesome. There's a chance these might be candidates for terraforming. Won't know till we scan them. That one looks promising. But again, I've been proven wrong so many times. I've seen planets that look like they'd be a good candidate, but they end up not being. And there's probably various factors. It's probably just outside the uh, Goldilocks zone. Okay, it doesn't look like anyone's discovered this system yet. Wow, that's not true. These planets, yeah, you've not yet mapped it. Yeah. I think this is another first discovery for me. Yep, no one's got their name on it. Cool. Now I just have to not die. Hm. It can be a little stressful. But I'll keep it together. Alright. Whoa. Okay, come on. Get in there. 
Let's go ahead and just rotate this a little. There we go. Ooh, it is, um, it's kind of lonely up here. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's a little eerie just seeing just the blackness above me. So I'm so used to seeing stars and nebulas and all that's like below us, relatively speaking. Ah, uh, damn. I probably should have found, uh, tried to find a fuel star. Alright. We got six more jumps, it looks like. Oh, good. That's not too bad. That wasn't so bad. That was a better maneuver. All right, let's see. Galaxy map. Okay. All right. Is this my target? Yeah, you can see that these stars are pretty sparse out this way. There we go. Let's see what we got here. There we go. That's a good fuel star, I think. Oops. Yeah, so what I what I wanted to do before was just select the star so I could jump to it and keep my route so I can just hit the next route button and hop to the next target. I'm having a fuel more often than I remember. I mean, I guess these, like, 253 light year jumps really takes a lot out of the fuel reserves. Oh, hello there. Oh. I gotta go see what the dog needs. Let me just finish this fueling maneuver here. Get my gas. Right. All right, I'm gonna pause right here, go see what the dog needs. I'll be right back. Alright, I noticed we've got two people watching now. Welcome. Um, in case you uh, need a catch up, we are between Colonia and Sagittarius A on the uh, upper part of the galactic plane. Making some discoveries. Getting our name on the galaxy, that sort of stuff. Fire, 
We're about... We're probably closer to 6,000 light years from Colonia. And the next way, uh, next wave, next leg of our trip should be a high point above the galactic plane. Uh, a what point of interest? When I initially plotted this course, um, I happened to notice there were a bunch of points of interest along the way, and I was like, "Oh, cool." Um, EDSM says there aren't too many people that have been to these points of interest. Cool, I'll go. You know add them to my route and then I found out why there aren't so many people and it's because a lot of these need special uh, well first of all you need a um, an anaconda that's been engineered for max jump range which I don't have and um, in some cases you even need to have a buddy shoot you some fuel uh, right before you make a jump, so. Yeah, that's fun. Alright. Let's see here. Yeah, this looks like another one. Oh, please be, uh... Candidate for terraforming. Nope. Yeah, and they're... Well, let's see. Nope, not a candidate. Oh, hello. You are a candidate for terraforming. Despite looking like a... Blue ball... Well, not like a good blue ball, but like a... Oh, oh, and this one too? Holy shit, this one? Okay. So these. So five, four, and three. Ha, awesome, I'll take it. Three terraformable worlds, good deal. All right, so three, four, and five. Okay, so three's already marked. Let's go over there and scan it. Though I don't know um, what value a terraformable world up here in the galactic plane's worth. Um, it's not like it's on any major trade routes, but uh, still pays the same regardless. So, but I don't know. Maybe we could make a trade route out here. There have been rumors about um, a base building feature in this game, which would be really cool. You'd actually be able to colonize planets and you'd set up bases and stuff. But unfortunately, uh, that feature um, is not planned uh, from what we know. The fleet carriers kind of fill that role in kind of a weird way. Um, Anyone who's watched this channel knows I've kind of have mixed feelings about fleet carriers, as do a lot of people. Um, all right. Yeah, this does not look like it could be terraformed. It looks like, um, if I didn't know any better, I'd assume this was a... Ah, oh, damn it, I did a double tap. Um, yeah, I would have assumed this was an ice planet of some kind. But I guess it's in the Goldilocks zone. Oh, wow. I nailed that perfectly. That never happens. And... Six. And I'm under par. So we'll get that nice efficiency bonus. Just need to look up how much more an efficiency bonus is. Because I know... If uh, you're the first to discover something, you get an additional 50% uh, reward on top of what you'd normally get for um, scanning a planet. 
So it can be quite, quite profitable to be an explorer. Um, you just have to, well, want to get away from it all. <laughs> uh, okay, so three, four, and five. Five's next. And then it looks like four's on the other side of the system. Which is fine. Well, damn. Not too bad. I picked a good I picked a good star. Lots of money in this one. I mean damn that's crap. Uh on the conservative side, you're looking at maybe about eight hundred thousand for each of the planets. Eh. I don't know. Three million, possibly? Of course, I am always have to double it, because it's always double, so we'll say six million. Just to emphasize that we're above the galactic plane. <laughs> All right. Out of range, too fast. All right. This is a sixer. that and we'll just stretch that out just a little bit okay while we wait for those probes I'm gonna take a look oh I guess those probes are faster than I thought oh that's really close like two percent um, these are upgraded scanners as well. Um, the radius has been increased by about 30%. Well, I say upgraded, I meant engineered. Same thing. I don't know, maybe in the later game. Cool. Alright, that's the dog. I'll let him back out. Okay, dog's back in. Uh, okay, four. Well, looks like that second person left. Oh, well. Probably not their thing. I get it. I would uh, much rather be flying than watching someone fly. I get it. So there's the Skull Nebula again. That's got to be like another galaxy or something. What? Well, I don't know. I don't even know if that's still the Skull Nebula. I don't even know if that's what it's called, to be honest. It just kind of looks like a skull. And it looks like a nebula. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, we're good. Don't mind me, I'm just admiring the interior of the ship. some point I gotta repair. Oop. Ah, damn it. Loop of shame. Wasn't paying attention. Bad pilot. Okay. I'm sure somebody's keeping score. Oh, a lot of money. To some charity. Last one in the system. Let's make this a good one. Seven, okay, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger than I'm used to, that's fine. All right, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> bad 75 on just three let's see where this guy lands oh yeah I overshot that one uh. Oh, you know what? Gotta go back to the galaxy map and update my route. There we go. Ooh, 62 light years. That's like right at my ship's maximum jump. Well, oh, 63. Cool. Okay, now we're back on track. Three more jumps. Got lots of fuel. Good to go. Thing here. Two bodies. High middle content world. I'm gonna guess no one else has been here. Yep. Alright. 
The galaxy's got like a nice like green color right here. Though I think part of that is the blue light coming off the neutron star. Still. Beautiful. Now what's going to be really weird is when we're out in the abyss region. And the galaxy, instead of being like taking up half our skybox, is going to be taking up like a quarter of it. Ah, oh, mail must be here. System scan complete. Yes, I've had my dog so long that I've, um... He has a different bark depending on the type of threat he sees approaching the house. He's got a special bark for mailmen. He's got a special bark for uh, animals. Like cats and stuff. Other cats. Um, he's got one for somebody coming up to the door. Okay. All right. Is that our last destination? Yes, it is. All right. Let me see if I can find a nice spot. Are there any stars I can refuel at? There's like nothing here. Oh, there's one. There we go. Oh, I didn't even see if that was a scoopable star. Oh, we're about to find out. If not, I just wasted that fuel. <laughs> no, I didn't really waste it. We'll see. You're scoopable. <laughs> Probably is, yep. Good, this makes me feel better. Don't like getting that gas tank get too low. I do the same in my car. Never, rarely do I let the gas tank get below half. Wow. These are um, all the stars that are in range. All right. Rocky bodies, asteroid clusters. Yeah, not much here. I'm going to assume no one's been here before, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good assumption. Cool. All right. All right, let's... Let's discover some planets. Oh. I'm not ready to discount these rocky bodies just yet. Just because I've never found a rocky body suitable for terraforming doesn't mean they don't exist. They're just really rare. I don't know. I really doubt one orbiting a gas giant is going to be a good candidate either. Kind of hard to maintain a Goldilocks zone if you're orbiting a gas giant. Though I'm sure there's... I don't know. There might be. Oh. Ah, here we go. Good. Asteroids. Get these out of the way. Good. Alright. Safe bet. 
Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. I found a Oh, a high metal content planet. Okay. All right. I shouldn't be quick to assume that these are all going to be satellites of these gas giants. Oh yeah, look at this. This should be the last one. Yep. So what do we have next? What's anything good? Yeah, I'm just gonna assume these are all not yet mapped. Though this one's got some interesting geological features. That one's got some geological features. Okay, cool. All right. Perfect. All right. did a lot of traveling, actually. Because we traveled, what, 1,700 light years just now? It's real easy to do that once you get into, like, a rhythm and you really start hitting the neutron highway. Now, I know this isn't a new system, because... Um, this was um, on a pre-plotted route. Yep. K1 CK. Kick. Yeah, looks like Kick got all these. Good job, kick. Oh, someone actually mapped this. Cool. All right. Alright, we're supercharged. Alright. Alright. Get that next waypoint. Okay. Well, I'm happy to report that we are officially past the halfway mark for uh, this leg of our journey. That's a two. Oh, three jumps. Okay. Neat. Oh, let me check my module health here. 91%. 
I should be fine as long as I don't let it drop below 80. I think 80% is when bad stuff starts happening. Honestly, I don't even know what happens when a frameshift drive starts to malfunction. Hmm. That's easy enough. Okay, we're doing good on fuel. Alright, supercharged. All right, we got our target locked in. Let's go. There we go. Yeah, because I'm right now, I'm 45% into Pioneer. And then... Right after that, it'll be elite. And I think once you get elite and one rank, you actually get a 10% discount. That might only be on certain planets. I'm not sure. Uh, certain planets, certain systems. But I think it might actually be just a galaxy-wide discount. It's like at that point you're considered a professional, so you get a professional discount. Oh, and then that discount should apply to, like, uh, modules and ships and stuff. Milky Moo! Milky Moo found this system first, it looks like. Or at least that planet. I didn't look at who actually discovered the star. Damn, I could have almost used uh, FSD injector to get that far. Drive charging. Oh wow, we're going in the abyss. Frame Look at that. Whew. This does make me a little nervous though. <laughs> like I get nervous when we start going away from the galactic plane. I'm trying to keep the bottom of my ship aligned with the galactic plane so there's some like resemblance of um, up and down some consistency for you all right okay let's see has anyone discovered this yeah well honest, I don't even need to be scanning these systems, but uh, I mean, a little extra money doesn't hurt, I guess. This is always a possibility one of these systems might be terraformable. One of these planets might be terraformable. Yeah, Shadow Nur? Shadow Nur? Oh. 
Oh! Well, look at that. That is actually a candidate for terraforming, and... Wait, how's that possible? No one's scanned it. Huh. Okay, um... I guess whoever found this neutron star was only cons um, worried about... Um... Moving on, I guess. Oh, they're lost. My gain. I'm going to get a first discovery credit for that planet and be the first to scan it. Or uh, map it. There we go. Mapping. Thank you. The worst one your nose itches with this VR headset. Because you can't quite get to your nose. You gotta like lift it up and scratch it some. Oh yeah, we're going we're going down into the galactic plane now. Whew. Look at all that gas. I know, I'm keeping an eye on the planet. Over here being Space Cadet, looking at everything. Hmm. I can't really... I mean, I guess I could repair some of these modules, but... It's just easier if I just jump in the normal space and then repair everything at once. It's kind of a pain. The sweet spot right there. The rule of six, as they say. Wow. Yeah, the, the galaxy is really dominating my cockpit here. Look at that. Huge. And this one's got a a ring. Oh, look, it's got a couple rings. Ah. The plot thickens. Okay, well, let's hit the ring first. Don't worry, that's just for the rings. <laughs> My scanners aren't that good. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna have to get above these rings, it looks like. Uh, maybe not. see. I've still got two more probes left before I exceed the efficiency bonus, so I think we can get this. Yes! 
<laughs> I got in like what five? All right. Okay, let me get my get away from this planet. Build up some speed. All right. I grab that next coordinate. Okay. Come on. Plot that rail. Good. Okay, let's see. How are we doing on fuel? I mean, it wouldn't hurt to find a, a system nearby I could scoop from. Let's see. What do we got? Ooh, there's like nothing out here. Damn. Make sure I didn't like... Nope, there... I've got no filters in place. What's this? Oh, yeah, that... It's way off the beaten path. Uh, wow. There's like nothing out here. That's what worries me about being this far out, is uh, we're going to run out of fuel. Hmm. Alright, well... Not hurting too bad for fuel, so let's hit it. Oh wow, look at that! It's like um, now it's like a, like a salmon color. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, being this far above the plane is a little nerve-wracking. Um. I just don't want to get stuck somewhere. Okay, let's take a look at what we got here. Ooh. System scan oh, the system actually has two. Ah, perfect. That's a scoopable star. And so is this one. Nope, you're not. You're a brown dwarf. Okay, fine. Okay, good. Okay, I feel better now. I can actually, like, I can scoop off that star and we'll be good. All right. Uh, let's see. No, it wasn't. It was B. Scoopable. All right. Good. Okay, so let me just kind of point my nose down a little bit. Let's see. What's around me? Not a whole lot. <laughs> uh, all right, well, while we're doing that, let me get my next coordinate. Yeah, 
there's like nothing out here. Wow, there's nothing out here but a neutron star. That's that's a little nerve wracking. Yes, just a little bit. Damn. Okay, well, at least we've got that locked in. Yeah, exploring uh, this area of space. Not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that. Oh, damn, frameshift drive's getting a little low on health. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's get the halfway point. And then I'll go jump into normal space and fix all this up. All right. Let me check something real quick. Okay. We're good. Just had to check the time. Make sure I was reading everything right. This clock's in UTC, so I've got to, like, do conversion. All right. So we're still speeding up, which is good. That means we haven't reached the halfway point yet. We're still in the influence of the uh, first star. Actually, let me finish the scooping because I'm already, if I stop now, I'm going to have to like build speed back up after I'm done fixing everything and uh, it just seems like a pain. So I'll just, yeah, we'll just do that. It seems like it'd be easier. Not even at the halfway point yet. Four hundred C. I mean, it's not the fastest I've ever traveled in Super Cruise, but eh, it's getting there. All right, we're at. Oh, there we go. We're in the influence of the star now in front of us, so now we're starting to slow down. We're feeling the effects of its gravity well. Oh. Connection error. What? Error code Mav Otter. What? Okay, I'm back. That was, uh, bizarre. <laughs> I, uh, I just got kicked from the game. Oh, damn. Are, are you kidding me? It put me right back by the neutron star. All right, well...
Alright, well, let's go ahead and start repairing things. Can't repair the power plant. All right. Oh, yeah, we're on emergency oxygen. All right, I'm going to have to... All right, sensors. Sensors, bring those back online. Power distributor, life support. Cargo hatch can stay off. Frame ship drive. Leave the hangers off, bring the fuel scoop online, shield. Okay, well, that was fun. Uh, okay, this is stupid. All right. Make sure nothing else is broken. Okay, I'm back. Man, that was weird. I, I've never been disconnected like that before. I just got like a um, an error. I think the stream may have uh, gone offline for a minute or two, but we seem to be doing good. We're we're back. You can thank my ISP for that. Okay, well at least all of our modules are back up to full health. Sans the power plant, but. That's, you know, can't really take that offline. We need a dry dock for that. And the hull's at 97. We need a dry dock for that, too. But, eh, oh well. Well, great. Now we're stuck here. Going to this star. Oh, right. Let me plot my next course. The hell? Oh. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's there is not a lot out here. We're uh we're pretty far. Let's see, pH. Let's see if we can even get to that system, first of all. If not, I might have to just cut my losses and leave. Uh, let's see here, pH. Oh, there it is.
Ooh, route plotting failed. That's not a good sign. Um, why? All right. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we might not be able to get there either. Well, I need to at least make the try, so. Yeah, I don't want to have to call any fuel rats out here just yet. Not today. Let me see how many more jumps we have. Okay, so we've got one more um, after this one. I'll be okay. We'll see. I want to get there and I want to see if um, we can still make that jump. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to make it. I'm trying, damn it. I'm really trying, but the, the Arctic Turn just doesn't have that kind of jump range. But we still have this wild view. Actually, you know what? We got like a couple minutes, right? Actually, let me turn those orbital lines off. Just make sure to turn them back on. There we go. I mean, this may not be like the highest point you can get, but it's pretty damn close. Let's see if I can get like a nice. There we go. I think that's enough pictures. All right. 
Well, at least we know we can come back to this system to refuel if we need to. So that's something. So the only thing I could see myself getting a fleet carrier for would be to use its 500 light year jump range. That would allow me to get to some pretty remote systems. But I don't know. I'm sure some explorers have already done that. I'm slowing down. Okay, where the hell are those lines? Okay, this is good. I'll just sit her right here. Come on, go down a little bit. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay, we got a full tank of gas. That makes me feel a little better. Still don't like the idea of being this far out, but uh, oh well, what are you going to do, right? Okay, we've cleared the stars. Heat range. Heat range. Heat influence. Yeah, for all of you watching at home, you get to watch me slowly succumb to space madness. Nothing out here but man's thoughts. Make you go crazy. All right. Ooh, 20. Damn. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Before we spend a lot of time scanning the system. Hags. Doesn't seem to be a lot of, um, got a lot of ice bodies, high metal content, asteroid clusters. Yeah, well, I guess we'll start here. that off my spectrometer. Hmm. Looks like a promising planet. I need to see if those are scoopable stars. I might just take a little detour and um, scoop off of one of them. Because I don't know when I'm going to have another chance to refuel. All right. 
right. All right. Let's see. What's over here? Wow, no one's... Hmm, okay. No one's mapped that planet. Interesting. Alright, I'm sure to say, sorry, discovered that planet. Oh, crap! This is a candidate for terraforming. Excellent. Well, I've got a reason to go out there. I've got two terraformable worlds. Both of which have not been discovered yet. So I'll at least get, like, first map writes on it. That's pretty cool. Oh, um, I guess I should check and see if that star is scoopable. Well, is that like planet 2B and 3B? Was it? Alright, cool. Alright, uh, let's see. Where are we going? Well, let's see here. I think that was two and three. Okay, cool. All right, well, what we'll do. Are you scoopable? Yes. Good. You're an M class. All right, cool. So let's bring ourselves around. Ah, oh, damn. 200,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 200,000 light seconds. That is a bit of an investment. Whew. That's crazy. Well, hopefully I'll be able to get myself up to a good speed. Alright. Well, I'm going to go check the chat. It's been a while since... Chat's quiet. It better not literally take me an hour. This is like the damn, uh, Hutton Orbital run all over again. Though Hutton Orbital, the distance was so great, it was literally like point zero something light years, so it's not quite as bad as this. Okay, well, 30 minutes is a lot better. We'll probably get up to... Hmm. We might hit a thousand times the speed of light. We'll see. Let me check that map again. Make sure we're not forgetting anything. Because I believe it was two and three... Two and three. So B two and B three are the are our candidates, and then the rest of these should be yep ice bodies. Cool. And there's no sense in checking beyond that because the rest of them are ice bodies. Wow, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> uh. Well, let's see. I guess I could talk about what else I've been playing. Um, I believe I mentioned on the stream that I purchased the 
Halo Master Chief Collection. Uh, so I've been playing through that. Uh, I started with Halo Reach. Been really enjoying that. I'm uh, nearing the end of it. Pretty fun. Uh, you know, I, uh, um, you know, people give the Halo series crap for, you know, for whatever reason. But I don't know. I, I think it's pretty decent military science fiction. And, you know, I enjoy it. It's a good, um, it's, it's a nice break from this. <laughs> But uh, what I didn't know was, apparently, so I purchased the Master Chief Collection thinking I would just get all the games. And while that is technically true, um, they're still releasing, re-releasing the games for this package. So right now they've got Reach, um, the original Halo, uh, the um, Combat Evolved um, Anniversary? Uh, whatever the latest version was of that. Um, I think it might have been like minorly digitally remastered or something. I'm looking forward to getting to that. Um, Halo 2 Anniversary. And they just released um, Halo 3. Um, but I've, everything I've read says um, I need to play ODST, Halo 3 ODST, um, before I play Halo 3. For like continuity sake. Because I've only played and completed Halo 1 and Halo 2. <laughs> so. Because um, it was at that point I. Um, let's see. That was the original Xbox. I got a 360. But for some reason I just never played any of the other Halo games. Oh. We just hit 600C. Um, yeah. For some reason I never played any of the other Halo games after that. I just don't know why. Um, and the reason I was excited about the Master Chief Collection was it was an opportunity to play all the Halo games on PC um, in one, like, thing. One self-contained launcher. So that's been a lot of fun, just being able to go through. and Because um, I hadn't played Reach before, and, and Reach is... Um, I, I was happy with Reach. Um, but again, you know, because the game was made after the original Halo, it suffers the the, the prequel um, paradox of the technology is better in this one than it is in, um, you know, the thing that's supposed to come after it. Um, so I'll be interested to see if there's any, like, in-universe reason why Master Chief doesn't have access to all this equipment that these six Spartans on Reach had. But, you know, it'll be interesting. But I've been enjoying it. It's a it's a good shooter. And um my favorite suit add-on is the jump pack. Because I don't know, that's just something that a lot of games don't take advantage of, especially first person shooters. Um the uh, the vertical um axis. You know, um you know, it's always about, you know, left, right forwards backwards but you know when you toss in elevation into that and being able to just scale up obstacles that, that's a game changer I absolutely love it um, so whenever that that suit upgrades available I always pick it up um, I actually got to the point where I was really good at dodging um, brutes with it um, and their, uh, their plasma attacks. So, that was a lot of fun. And I bought it on Steam. I think I ended up paying like... Well, let's see. I think I ended up paying like 25 bucks for it. So, not bad. And it, um, it basically included like a season pass. I use that in quotes. Um, it's basically a season pass because the um, they still haven't released... Halo 3, ODST, and um, Halo 4. And so those are kind of like um, the DLC. So, um, but looking forward to having those. That, that'll be a lot of fun to finally be able to play through all those. Um, but right now what I'm doing is um, I'm just going to play through all the games in chronological order. So hopefully by the time I'm done with Halo 2, uh, ODST will be out. 
so I can start playing that, and then three, and then by the time I'm done with three, hopefully four will be out, but, you know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, we're really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. I recommend it if you're looking for a good um, shooter. Plus, I've been listening to a podcast called uh, Wizard and the Bruiser, where they talk about various um, franchises and, um, you know, nerd culture stuff. And uh, they talked about the Halo franchise. And, you know, looking back, because I remember when the first Halo came out, um, it was one of those, like, killer apps for the original Xbox. And it was that and... The original Fable, the reason I bought an Xbox back when I was in high school. Um, I actually bought a used one from a guy. Um, and well, granted, Fable, it didn't live up to its hype, but it was still a decent action RPG. So for what it was, it was pretty good. Um, that, was the, that was my first introduction to the Peter Molyneux um, hype train. <laughs> where the man will overpromise and underdeliver on something because the kind of stuff he was talking about and I should have known better that the technology just wasn't there for what he was trying to go for um, though thinking about it now the stuff he was promising back in the early 2000s you could probably achieve with today's technology especially um, procedurally generated voxels um, you know, that sort of stuff. Because um, he was talking about in the game, you know, the game would take place not only... Um, it would take place over years and years. And, you know, if, uh, if an acorn dropped on the ground and you stepped on it, um, it wouldn't grow into a tree. But some other player might not step on that acorn and it would grow into a tree or, you know, all this other stuff and... I don't know. It was supposed to be, like, dynamic, and each player's world would be unique. And, yeah, it wasn't anything like that. It was a decent game, though. I mean, I really enjoyed it for what it was, um, especially now looking back. But, you know. Um, Peter Molyneux is also famous for making uh, the Black and White series. Um, where you literally play a god. <laughs> Those are pretty fun games. Um, I played Black and White, and it was fine. Black and White 2 was uh, expanded on that. But, you know, like I said, um, I like to think that I'm older and wiser now than I was even seven years ago, six years ago. Whatever Star Citizen announced. So, like I said, I haven't given up on the project, but I ain't giving them more money, that's for sure. And I'm not going to ask for a refund because um, that was a risk I took. And, you know, I didn't spend a lot of money on it. Um, there's people who have spent thousands of dollars. Um, I think I only spent like 150 Not all at once. It was, um, it was an initial $60 pledge, and then I upgraded it. But, you know, we'll see if old Chris Roberts can come through with what he promised. But so far, that project has just been uh, the definition of feature creep. But, you know, that's all... Uh, that's all I'm really going to say about that. I mean, really, there's not much to say about that project that hasn't already been said. Alright. So, was it 2 and 3? B2, B3? I can't even remember. Let's see, let me bring my speed down a little bit here. Take a look. System map. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was two and three. Yep. Cool. All right. Okay. Two, 
too fast. Slow down a little. Perfect. All right, you're a six. Let's see. We'll put one there and one there and then one right there. And let's see. Uh, about right. Let's see. That's too far. I'll just bring you in there. Put you right there. Let's see where that goes. All right, 78% initially. That's not too bad. Hopefully that'll land uh, probably a little left of center. Oh, perfect. Look at that. That was what, four? All right, B2 and here's B3. All right, we're going to see if we can actually make it to that star system. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think that might just be one that I just can't get to. Now, thankfully, I did my homework. And I've got more than enough range to get to Beagle Point and also to the uh, furthest point as well. Um, I, can't, I can never remember the name of that. So that's like the whole point of this whole expedition is to get to Beagle Point and then like beyond. So that part's still happening. Um, it's just these little side trips I didn't really do my homework on. Eh. But it gave me a reason to at least travel above the galactic plane and below it and see what was there. So I made a lot of discoveries, um, lots of good data. So I should be make I should make a lot of money off that. Which even since I started this journey, I think I started with like 89 million and I'm back up to 127, which was uh my balance before I bought this ship. So um this trip's already paid for itself more or less. Um well, I've broken even. Oh, perfect. Perfect coverage. All right. Okay, that one landed a little too left of center, but doesn't matter. Got my efficiency bonus. Hmm. All right. Okay, let me grab, let me check the galaxy map here. Did I miss something? Okay, let me grab my next waypoint. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so we've got a full tank of gas. All right, is there anything else out here? Yeah, there's nothing out here but neutron stars. Alright, into the abyss we go. Well, metaphorical abyss, not the literal abyss. That's actually a galactic sector, but you know what I mean. To the darkness. Into the black. Which, this is the real black. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. Like, I keep orienting the ship 
to have the galactic plane above me. I don't know. I guess that's just a psychological, um, a subconscious thing. All right, what do we got here? All right, I'm still gonna give these planets a good scan because chances are they haven't been. Oh no, never mind. Our buddy Shadow Nar. Shadow Noir? I don't know. Man, I learned to read by phonics. All these names, they confuse me. I'm glad I topped off my tank at that previous place, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, go any further than this. All right, so let's go and grab our, our boost. Okay, so our next waypoint is that point. Oop, wrong map. I wanted the galaxy map, thank you. All right, let's see here what we can do. All right, let's see if I have better luck plotting a course. No, plotting failed. Okay, let's try, no boost. Is that going to work? Yeah, you're not going to be able to make it. Alright, let's try... Level 3 boost. The hell? Okay, that was weird. Maximum distance exceeded. Uh. <sighs> okay, well, doesn't look like I can get there. Pity, too, because it's actually a fuel star. Yeah, I, I can't reach it with... Because uh, even with a level 3 FSD boost, I'm only getting 126 light year jump and this is just not gonna do it it's just so barren out here I, I can't get anywhere Pity, because there are like 13 people that had visited that point of interest, and I won't be one of them. Ah, that's a shame. Oh, well. I guess we're just going to have to give up on that one. All right, well, let me, uh, let me see if I can plot a course out of here. So, I was a wash. See if I can plot a course to this guy. Okay, good. Of course, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work. But okay. 
All right, let me double check something real quick. E4-5. Okay, that's our, that's our destination. Okay, well, we tried. We tried to make that. We tried to make that journey and couldn't make it. Oh, well. Oh, I forgot to mention. So, I actually have a nice big chunk of time this Saturday. So, I'm thinking about doing a um, a bonus stream to kind of make up for the um, time that my air conditioning was out. Um, so, that's going to be... Um, I'll make a formal announcement on Twitter, but... That's going to be uh, Saturday at starting at noon Eastern. So if you got a little time, come on over. Check it out. Hopefully, I can get... Um, while I'm off stream, hopefully I can get closer to um, the Great Annihilator. And then um, I can start the stream. We hit the Great Annihilator, then Sagittarius A, and we can finish off this leg of the journey. And then next Wednesday, we can start leg three of our journey, which will be the leg to Beagle Point, which will be one of the longer legs. Um, I some, somewhere in the neighborhood of like, whoa, what the, what the hell? Shit. Fuck. Um, fuck, I'm in a black hole. What the fuck? Ah, shit. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Shit. Come on. Finish cooling down. I need to get out of here. Come on, girl. Come on. Get the hell out of here. All right. All right. Where's my escape vector? Fuck is my escape vector? Damn it. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. There we go. Shit. Okay, where the hell's my escape vector? Oh no, I don't want to go that way. Or, or do I? Where the fuck is... Okay, good. I got it. I think. Fuck. Holy shit, that scared the fuck out of me. Holy shit. <laughs> fuck. I hate black holes. Damn it. All right, how we doing? Fuck. I thought it was a goner. I really thought it was dead. Shit. Fuck. Scan yeah, no shit. There's a neutron star. Where the fuck's the black hole? Shit. Oh, 
Ugh. Well, you guys want to see a black hole? There it is. Fuck. All right. All right, let's... Okay, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. So you can't actually observe a black hole, but you can observe the light. There it is, right there. You see how the light's bending around it? There's the black hole. Fuck. If that had been... I, oh, fuck. I don't even know how close I was to that thing. I mean, enough to drop into, like, cruise, but... Or, uh, real space. Damn. Fuck. Oh. Hags found it. Black holes are typically the stellar remnants of supermassive stars of 20 solar masses or more that have reached the end of their lives. Nuclear fusion ceases and the star collapsed to the most extreme point possible, where gravity was so extreme light could no longer escape. Somehow we escaped. Uh, if matter should fall in such a body, an extreme burst of gamma radiation will be emitted, but otherwise the body is only visible by the gravitational distortion in the vicinity. In many cases, black holes can be seen emitting brightly in X-rays because of the matter fail, uh, falling on their surface from a companion body. Here's our companion body. Oh, wait a minute. So wait, you're telling me this dude found the black hole, but he didn't find the damn, uh, star. Or, uh, neutron star. Fuck. Man, that scared the shit out of me. Fuck black holes. I hate black holes. Ugh. They scare me. Alright, let me see if I got any reaction from the chat. Well, I didn't actually didn't take that. I actually didn't take that much damage. Thankfully, the uh, safety systems of my ship kicked in and like dropped me out of uh, super cruise. <sighs> but yeah, um, I think we actually saw the a uh, part of the uh, the event horizon. Whew. Well, damn. All right, where are we as far as... We got 17 jumps to that next destination. So once we hit that waypoint, we'll be back on our track. So we're kind of going off the beaten path a little bit. Uh, which is good, because it'll give us an opportunity to discover stuff. Um, like black holes. Ugh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Once I uh, get my boost off this star, I'm gonna call it. Well, I'm gonna make my next jump and then call it. Um, so, I think we've had enough excitement for tonight. Um, but yes, so bonus stream Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, if um, if everything works out, we should be able to finish up this leg of the journey. Um, but, you know, I won't make any promises. Um, I will do the best I can to try to wrap up this leg of the journey on Saturday. Um, actually, while we're doing that, how far are we from... 
How far are we from Sagittarius A? Yeah, by the way, this is the star density, the center of the galaxy. Um, yeah, we're not far. We're only like 5,000 light, light years away. Now, granted, we are taking a little detour. We're um, diverting to go to the Great Annihilator, and then we're going to come up and hit it. So the Great Annihilator is... When I call it the Great Annihilator. I think it's called the Great Annihilator. Yeah, the Great Annihilator is only five. Okay, so they're about equ equ equidistance from each other. Um, I think it was a difference of like 3,000 light years. Um, extra added to our journey by going... I triangulated it when I was plotting this. Um, so yeah, we're actually we're gonna be going to another black hole, um, um, but it's a famous black hole. As opposed to that one, though, I guess that black hole is now famous for almost killing me. So. Ah. <sighs> Now, if we get caught in, um, if we get caught in the exclusion zone of a neutron star in normal space, our chances of survival are way less. Because um, the problem is that neutron radiation, um, will just start just destroying our ship and all of its components. Um, about all we can do at that point is um, activate the two auto field maintenance units and just try to keep the frameship drive from destroying, uh, from blowing up um, until we can get, uh, till the cooldown period's done and we can jump out. Um, actually, it and the thrusters um, are going to be our priority if that happens. See, so, yeah, I've already got a contingency plan uh, if that happens. Hopefully, we never have to use that plan, but that's my plan. Let's activate these guys, keep the thrusters and the frame shift drive repaired, and uh, hope for the best. So, hope it doesn't come to that. But damn, now we're at 96% hull integrity. Ugh. Yeah, we're gonna need a dry dock. Yeah, I've been, so I try, it's very, very difficult to take a screenshot of a black hole just because of their nature. Um, but hopefully you were at least able to see the effect it had around the light, so.
<sighs> Man, that's taking a while. How's our fuel situation? Yeah, we're good on fuel. Well, at least we're moving towards the galactic plane, so we'll have more fueling options. But you get out here, it's just so barren. Can't really get to anything. Oh, better slow down a little bit here. Oh yeah, you can start to see the blue light now affecting the ship. See that? Okay. Yeah, it looks like its cones are vertical relative to my ship, so that should be fine. Yeah, I'm I'm so scared of these that I like don't point my nose at the center. It almost looks like a flame. Really hot flame. All right. Alright. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 no. Kidding me. Fifty nine? No, 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 That's a waste of a boost. I don't think my computer took into account that there was a neutron star in that black hole system. Oh. That's why it's not taking into account. Okay, cool. Jet boost. Oh, that's better. Six. Ah, that's still way too... It's kind of a waste. I don't... Come on. There we go. Let's see how close I can get to this guy. Uh, 305, huh? Hmm. Damn. And I'm guessing our buddy there is, um, a neutron star. Damn. I hate wasting a boost like this, but what the hell, right? Not much choice. So I didn't have to fly to that stupid thing. Now I'm mad. Oh well. Yeah, because this one's a neutron star. Well good, I didn't land into a black hole, that's good. <laughs> Occupational hazard, I guess. Gas giant. Hmm. I haven't seen too many gas giants on that side of the spectrum before. Water-based life. And there should be another one right here. Cool. We're done. All right. Well, let's see. Let's go ahead and just 
jump out real quick. Alright. Well, I want to thank all of you for watching the stream today. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, for the archive. Just search uh, Red Falcon Expedition to Beagle Point. You should find it pretty easily. Um, for those that are watching this on YouTube, uh, there is a link in the description to my... Um, Twitch stream, so you can watch it live. Um, streams are every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And occasionally we'll have bonus stream on Saturdays. Really depends on what my schedule looks like. And uh, of course, to keep up to date on all this, just follow me on Twitter at RedFalcon2K6. And I think that's, that about covers it, everyone. Um, again, thank you for watching, and you be safe out there. Cool.